what's going on guys, I'm Ence to Maze, and on the 1st of April 2018, the Pokemon anime will hit its 21st anniversary, and with me being one of the biggest Pokemon anime fanboys ever, I cannot just ignore this event, so to celebrate it, I've decided to create this video, my opinion on every Ash catching Pokemon. Why I chose this topic in particular, is because I feel like it's fitting seeming as Ash has had many Pokemon throughout the years, and it finally gives me a chance to show you subscribers of mine how I feel about each of the Pokemon, seeming as you keep asking. However, I don't want to be the only one to do this idea, which is why I've decided to make this a tag series too. Also that way, other Poketubers can celebrate this event if they didn't have anything planned already. There's just three simple rules to follow if you want to do this tag. Rule 1. Link the creator's channel in the video and description, aka that being me, Entity Maze. Rule 2. Just go all out for about 30 seconds of what the Pokemon was like and what your favourite moments from it was, then give it a rating out of 10 afterwards. Rule 3. Go through Ash's Pokemon in chronological capture order, even for Pokemon he released, such as Bullifree. And finally, Rule 4, tag 3 Pokétubers towards the end of the video to do this tag too. However, if nobody tags you and you just want to do this for fun, then by all means go ahead, just as long as you follow the rules. And well, that concludes the intro and tag rules, so I shall give my opinions in a second. However, just please bear in mind that of course it is my opinions, so please respect mine, and I shall respect yours in the comments below. Happy days. Regardless, with that obvious thing said now, let's now jump right into my opinions. Pikachu Pikachu was Ash's first and partner Pokemon. It can give nice comedic moments, awesome battles, and even cute moments, which I really like. My favourite moments from this Pokemon have to be when it used to have that ketchup addiction, it was so relatable and funny, and of course we have the most memorable and cool battles ever in my opinion, but being it going against the Bias's Latios and Alon's Pseudo Legendaries. They were both so epic to watch and had nice strategies, which made me go, what? But feel so much excitement, such as the finale in the Latios battle when it used the Volt Tackle and Iron Tail combo. That was awesome. Overall too, both battles just showed how powerful this Pokemon can be, which is a plus, as I like powerful Pokemon. Unfortunately though, it doesn't always have that incredible power, as its level resets when going to a new region. But the point still stands that I enjoy this Pokemon's screen time, and its battles once it gains its level back. Overall, Pikachu gets a nice 8 out of 10. Butterfree Butterfree was Ash's first capture, and shared a nice bond with Ash, willing to help him out in any battle. However, I can't really say much else for how it acted, as it didn't have that much personality. However, I did still find this Pokemon to be decent. My favourite moments have to be when it actually evolved into Butterfree, as it had a nice build up story, and finally when it got released to go with its loved one. It was a beautiful story, even if it was sad, but sad emotion helps to make a good story. Overall, Butterfree gets a 4 out of 10. Not bad. Pidgeot Pidgeot was Ash's first bird Pokemon, and a common theme with his bird Pokemon is that they don't have much personality, so I don't have much to say for that, which is disappointing. In fact, I believe it didn't win any official battles too, which is even more disappointing. My only favourite moments from this Pokemon has to be when it finally evolved into its final form and had a nice battle against the wild bad Fero that Ash had hurt when it was a Spearow. But that's it, everything else about this Pokemon to me is meh. So it gets a 3 out of 10. Sorry, Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur was the first Kanto starter Pokemon Ash had caught, and its personality is just that it's caring, sweet, and loyal, which I can't help but adore. I love how it's the boss of all of Ash's Pokemon at the Laboratory too, due to its good sense of organisation. Apart from that though, this Pokemon was pretty strong too. My favourite battle, which will also count as my favourite moment, being this battle against Brandon's Dust Clubs. Not even Charizard could stop it, so it was nice to see if this not fully evolved Pokemon shine, and overall, apart from that anyway, it did have many cool battles. Overall, Bulbasaur gets a 7 out of 10 for me. Charizard. You all know him, and you all love him, and I can agree too. It is for sure one of Ash's most epic and powerful Pokemon ever. If not, 
the most powerful. Although I do find another Pokemon to be more epic. We shall talk more about that later. Regardless, bruh. It was always such fun to watch Charizard in battles. My favourite having to be against Blair's Magma due to how iconic the moment is and it had pretty fast action, which I love to see. My overall favourite moment though has to be how it finally obeyed Ash as it started to ignore him when it evolved into Charmeleon because it thought it was way better at battling than Ash could ever make it. But nope, it got wrecked by a Poliwrath and after seeing Ash staying up all night just to take care of it, it started to respect him. Then winning the battle under Ash's command, and then from then on, they just had such a brilliant, heartwarming friendship, winning loads of battles. Like seriously, this development was really nice. It continued even further, but I already know this video would be very long, so I'm not going to get into that. The point is, I just found this development to be amazing, every single battle to be so epic, and just had a nice personality. Overall, Charizard gets a 9.5 out of 10. It may be overrated, but I don't care, it's just so awesome to me. Squirtle Squirtle was a nice little Pokemon. At first it was kinda a rebel, but then it turned into a nice, caring Pokemon, which I find to be cool development, and in every battle we've seen it in, it just performed very nicely, making me respect this little guy. My favourite moment from this Pokemon has to be against Brandon's Ninjask. That was pretty sweet, I just really wish it didn't go with the Squirtle squad though, so we could see more from this Pokemon. But hey, stuff like that happens. Regardless, Squirtle gets a decent 6 out of 10. Kingler Kingler is just a meh Pokemon to me, due to the fact Ash never used it. And when he did, it was very plot armor. It performed amazingly out of nowhere. Although I will admit still, it was a pretty cool battle. I guess that would be my favorite moment from this Pokemon too. This Pokemon definitely needed more justice though, but for now, it gets a 2 out of 10 for me. Primeape Primeape was only present for like 2 episodes and never returned, which is very disappointing. However, I still enjoyed those 2 episodes a lot due to its funny and angry personality and just how strong the anime showed it to be. My favourite moment though has to be when it evolved, that was pretty funny. Regardless, I have nothing else to say, nor am I gonna rate it as that would be a bit unfair due to it only having 2 episodes. So that's what I'm gonna say for Primeape. Muck Muck is just Muck, and I love it. Like, seeing it go into battles and Pokemon not be able to touch it due to its body is pretty great and entertaining. You gotta love the personality of him showing so much care to people too by smothering itself on them. Very sweet. My favourite moment overall from this Pokemon though has to be when we first saw it in this battle against the Bellsprout in the league. Nice and easy match. I just wish we got to see more of it in battles though. But regardless, Muck still gets a decent 5 out of 10. Taurus This Pokemon, or should I say each 30 of them, are a weird entry to Ash's team. It even got cut out in the dub when it made no sense whatsoever that Ash owned them when we saw them in another episode. But regardless, yeah, I don't feel much for Taurus. Whatever one we see, it's just always so lackluster to see in battles and it doesn't have that much personality. However, I do like the gag of Ash having 30 of them, even if weird. But overall, I'm just going to move on and give this Pokemon a 2 out of 10. Lapras Lapras is actually loved by many, but for me, it was just meh. Don't get me wrong, I liked his backstory, it was sad, but I just couldn't enjoy his personality or how it performed in battles. I'm sorry, <laughs> this is for sure going to get hate. Regardless, I will give a favourite moment, which is when it reunites with its family, as that was sweet. But, Lapras, I'm gonna give you a 3 out of 10. Snorlax. What a thick and powerful boy. For sure one of Ash's most powerful Pokemon. It even has a very inconsistent moveset, which proves that it's powerful. <laughs> uh, regardless, just every single battle this Pokemon has been in was such a joy to watch. He's also very funny when it comes to other stuff, so that's a bonus too. My favourite moment though has to be its battle against Greta's Horiyama and Medicham. It managed to live from those fighting type moves, which is just such an achievement in my books. You know what though? I think you get the picture. So, it gets a 9 out of 10 for me. Such a lovable boy. Heracross. Heracross was an eager, funny and really powerful Pokemon. 
I just wish we got to see more of it in the Jota series. However, the anime creators did make up for this by making it return in the Battle Frontier and Sinner League, where it performed amazingly too. So, that just saved its rating from going down by a little bit. Regardless, as you can probably tell, I enjoyed watching its battles a lot. My favourite actually being its battle against Gary's Magma. It used Mega Horn through the flamethrower and didn't feel a thing. That's amazing. Like seriously, even didn't feel fire blasts at times too. That's so awesome. This be my favourite moment from this Pokemon too. We need more moments like that too, cause like, oh, it was just so cool. Regardless, that's what I'm gonna say for Heracross, as I think I've given a good picture. So, it gets a nice 8 out of 10. Bayleaf. Bayleaf to me was a sweet, caring, powerful and funny Pokemon. And unlike all of Ash's others, this one actually has a crush on him, which is why I found it to be funny due to how many times it used Body Slam to show its affection to Ash, and sweet due to any other way it would show affection to him. Many do find this concept to be weird, and I don't blame you, but I still enjoyed it. My favourite moment from this Pokemon though has to be how it developed not to use Body Slam so many times on Ash due to him accidentally shouting at it. But she understood, and from then on anyway, we became even more close and won many battles, which I loved many from her. I would say Chuck's Machamp is my favourite one. Overall, Bayleaf gets a 7 out of 10. Quilava Quilava was pretty much Ash's fire type replacement for when Charizard wasn't around, so it had to give a big impression on people due to how many liked Charizard. And in my opinion, it was a decent Pokemon. I liked watching all of its battles as a Cyndaquil. And come on, just look at it, it's very cute overall. My favourite moment from this Pokemon though has to be its evolution, which was actually in the Diamond and Pearl series. It was such a cool way to evolve for me, due to it being many series later, and against the Team Rocket mech. I just wish we got to see more of it as a Quilava though, as it for sure would be more powerful. But as for its battles as a Cyndaquil, I guess my favourite would be against Bugsy Cypher. Both Ash and it perform very well against the tricky strategy. Overall though, Quilava gets a 5 out of 10 for me. Totodile Totodile was pretty much the original funny Pokemon. And how it was funny to me was just by how stupid it can be, what it does in battles at times, and how it just always danced, having such a positive attitude. We all need that kind of positivity in our life. Regardless of that though, it performed alright in battles. Unfortunately though, I can't think of anyone I really liked, as they were all just decent to me. As for my favourite Toad style moment though, I guess it would be the entire episode where it fell in love with an Azumarill. I loved seeing it fall in love with it. Poor guy couldn't get it though. Overall, this fully evolved Pokemon, but decent one, gets a 6 out of 10. Noctowl Noctowl is probably the most interesting bird of Ash's birds, but despite that, it's not my favourite. I do like it a lot due to its interesting concept, aka using psychic attacks, but another two take the spotlight for the best bird. Regardless, yeah, I just loved seeing it perform amazingly in battles with its psychic attacks. My favourite moment from this Pokemon actually being all the battles I had against Morty's Pokemon in his gym battle. I just loved seeing the kind of strategies it made, and already, it is a strong bird. Oh yeah, it's also Ash's first shiny Pokemon, which is pretty cool too. Finally though, as for its personality, it's one of those common serious types, but I still like seeing it a bit. Overall, Noctowl gets a 6 out of 10. Donphan Donphan was a cute Pokemon as a fan fee, and I loved watching it develop into this Donphan. However, we didn't get to see it as much as a Donphan, which is the disappointing factor for this Pokemon, as it did show to have potential to be one of Ash's most powerful Pokemon. But regardless of that, I just adored seeing it try and grow strong as a fan fee. And again, it was cute, shown to be very caring too, which is even more aww. My favourite moment from this Pokemon though, and it's a bit of a weird choice, is it reuniting with Ash after his Hoenn journey to then travel with him for the Kanto Battle Frontier. I love the concept of him bringing all Pokemon on a journey, and it definitely got the time to shine but it needed more. Overall, Donphan gets a 5 out of 10 for me, mostly thanks to its time as a fan Fivo. Swallow Swallow was shown as a tough and persistent Pokemon, and you can see this throughout all of its battles it had throughout the years. However, that's all it really had to its character, just that, which is kind of disappointing, but it's alright at best. My favourite moment from this Pokemon though has to be its battle against Winona's Shiny Swallow. It was interesting seeing two of the same birds fight against each other, and it had pretty nice action. Swallow overall gets a 4 out of 10. Sceptile Sceptile was a really cool and powerful Pokemon for me, 
Most of the time it was shown to be calm and collective, which doesn't really show that much emotion. However, it was a nice twist, and just made you love it straight away due to how well it performed in battles. I can count so many battles that I've loved from this Pokemon. Broly's Hariyama, Norman Slackin, Winona's Altaria, Maze Blaziken, Tobias's Darkrai, and much more. You get the picture. You're gonna love how it has that trick in its mouth too, to show how serious it is. My favourite moment from this Pokemon overall though, has to be that battle against Maze Blaziken. It was a really nice battle, it even had its ability activated. Overall though, this Pokemon gets a 9 out of 10. I just wish I could express more of how cool I find this Pokemon. But, hopefully what I said gives you a good idea. Corefish Corefish was a really funny Pokemon to me, and that's because of how it acted. It always did something stupid or would try to make your life anyway. I like getting comedy like this in Pokemon. It's not exaggerated too. Regardless of that though, Corefish was kind of alright in battles. My favourite being, and it's a weird choice, it's battle against Flannery's Torkoal. I found it to be pretty cool. Other than that though, I can't think of a moment that is my favourite, but trust me, I enjoyed seeing this Pokemon on screen. Corefish gets a decent 6.5 out of 10. Torkoal Toko was very meh for me, and that's because 1. We formed poorly in battles, I think it hasn't won any battles at all, and 2. I just don't like its personality, Iki is a bit of a crybaby. But hey, at least it's caring and loyal to Ash I guess, and I will also admit, it was a unique idea to give a Pokemon that personality too. But it just didn't work on me. Despite all of this though, my favourite moment from this Pokemon has to be its battle against Registeel. At least we saw cool moments within that. But apart from that, this Pokemon just gets a 3 out of 10. Glalie Glalie is a really forgettable Pokemon for me, and why that is, is because it got caught towards the end of the Advanced Generation series. All I can pretty much remember is that it was cute as a snow runt and had about 1 or 2 alright battles as a Glalie. That's it. One day I will rewatch its moments, but for now I'm just gonna give this Pokemon a 2 out of 10. Sorry. Apom Apom was a nice funny Pokemon Ash had. However, because it got traded to Dawn, I'll only be focusing on the time we saw it with Ash, which to be honest, although it did have that funny personality, I didn't really like it much in battles. Contests for sure suit it way better, and I don't really have any memorable moments regarding it, apart from I guess its capture episode. So for that, I'ma only give Apom a 3 out of 10. Sorry, but trust me, I liked it a lot when under Dawn's care. Staraptor Staraptor has to be my favourite of Ash's bird Pokemon. It actually had some personality, aka it is a proud, fast and fierce Pokemon. You might think it's nothing too special, but I still enjoyed seeing it, as it made it look cool and I just found this development nice, as it made for great battles later in this series. Aka all the special training Ash did with it, and of all this counts as every Pokemon Ash had in the Diamond and Pearl series, how it and Ash got out of depression after getting defeated badly by Paul to get stronger. I really adored that episode. My favourite moment from this Pokemon though, has to be its evolution episode actually. I loved how it evolved in the tournament, and I just found the entire thing to be awesome anyway. Also, if I was to choose a battle I liked from it, that would be its battle against Paul's Gastrodon in the Sinnoh League. I found the strategy Ash and it pulled off to be quite nice. Overall though, Star Raptor gets an 8 out of 10. I can't express enough how cool and nice I find this Pokemon. Nicely done. Torterra Torterra to me at first, aka when it was a Turtwig, was a mad Pokemon, due to me not liking it and all of its evolutionary designs. However, as time went on, I put that stupid factor aside, and I started to enjoy watching it perform well in battles, and develop into this huge Torterra. In fact, if you guys allow me to count this as my favourite moment, I just loved seeing it evolve into a slower Pokemon and having to get used to that. Also coming up with new strategies. I found it very unique compared to Ash's old Pokemon and it fits very well due to how big this Pokemon actually is. I also enjoyed this battle against Palmer's Rafiria due to the whole rock climb strategy. I loved seeing how it worked in the anime too. Finally, for its personality though, I loved it as a Turtwig, but I feel like the sweetness of it just faded away and now it's just a full on serious Pokemon, which is kinda disappointing to me. But regardless of that, Totara overall is not a bad Pokemon, so I'm gonna give it a 5 out of 10. You may have expected higher, but I just prefer other Pokemon over this one. <sighs> it 
if you made it this far into the video, comment Entity Squad, but oh my god guys, I'm losing my voice due to how long this is. <laughs> Infernape. For sure this Pokemon is the most developed out of Ash's Sinnoh team, and it's also for sure one of the most powerful ones too. And simply because of those reasons, I loved it a lot. Like seriously, its whole backstory of Paul treating it in an unfair way to then releasing it was pretty sad. And then to see Ash taking this Pokemon, treating it in a nice manner, was just really heartwarming, as Infernape deep down was a really friendly, caring, sweet and awesome Pokemon. It deserved happiness from a trainer, not pain. And of course, unlike Paul Cord, Ash managed to pull off Infernape's ability. Blaze. It got enraged the first couple of times, but due to their strong friendship, they then managed to master it and beat Paul in the league, which was just really satisfying, and that battle was actually one of my all-time favourite battles from the Pokemon anime. Such an epic battle. I also really liked the episode after Ash caught Chimchar though, as that's where Chimchar had to get used to its new feel from a trainer due to its tragic time with Paul. The overall story just got me so interested. And fun fact, that was the first Pokemon episode I ever watched recorded. Regardless, as you can hopefully see, thanks to this Pokemon's narrative and development, and just how strong it got, I loved it so much. Overall, Infernape gets a 9 out of 10, one of the best Pokemon. Breezel. This Pokemon got traded to Ash due to how interested it was in battles instead of contests, and I'm so glad this actually happened, because I started to love Breezel more as a battler. It was so strong despite not being fully evolved, which I found amazing, and just every time it battled, pretty much it made cool strategies. My favourite being Ice Aqua Jet, even if it was made under Dawn's care, but still, I just found that whole strategy to be fantastic. My favourite moment from this Pokemon though, has to be its battle against Malian Zakario. That was pretty sweet. To top this Pokemon off too, I did really love its personality too. It fit Ash really well as they were basically the same personality wise. Overall, Breezel gets a nice 6 out of 10. Pretty nice addition to Ash's team. <coughs> That's from the coke. Gliscor. Oh boy, I love this Pokemon so much. What a joy it was to watch him on screen. I loved him so much simply because of his comedic personality, aka how he cried if he fell or getting yelled at, and how he is just so hyper unhappy, even sticking his tongue out. I just adored it all so much, and I can't thank the anime creators enough for making him keep the same personality when evolving. That was perfect, as usually when Pokemon evolve, they don't always keep the same personality. But they did here, which I adore. Regardless, my favourite moment from Gliscor has to be when Brock tried to take it home on its back. I just found this overall scene to be hilarious. But apart from that, I do also really like how well it performed in the Ash vs Paul League battle. It was so strong and epic. And in fact, that's also one final reason I like Gliscor. Because it's really powerful. Gotta thank the Air Battle Master for that though. Anyhow, this Pokemon overall gets a 9 out of 10. I can't express how much I love it. <laughs> Gibble. This Pokemon was a late addition to Ash's Sinnoh team, however despite that, it was actually pretty decent overall. Why that is, is because it had some nice development episodes, such as when it finally mastered Draco Meteor. Oh, and I might as well mention here, I loved how the failed ones always hit Piplup. I found it funny, especially when Piplup ran away because of it. <laughs> Uh, regardless, finally, I just love Gibble for its personality, aka it being clumsy, oblivious, destructive, and how it actually bites people's heads to show affection. I loved it all, simply because it was mostly made to be comedic anyway. It for sure worked on me. My favourite moment from this Pokemon though, has to be that it nearly defeated Tobias' Darkrai in the Pokemon League. That's an almost great achievement. Hopefully in the future though, this Pokemon can become a Garchomp, as that would be so awesome, especially if it keeps the same personality it had as a Gibble. Just imagine. Overall, Gibble gets a decent 5 out of 10. Unfezzin. This Pokemon and some other Unova Pokemon are probably going to be the shortest sections in this video, but regardless of that, starting this off, Unfezzin is meh overall. Not much personality, development and memorable battles, but I guess it's nice that it's caring, and for one actual memorable battle that just appeared in my head, I guess it would be it going against Scaliswana. That was kind of nice, I guess. But legit, apart from that, I have nothing else to say for Unfezzant, so it gets a 3 out of 10. Oshawa. 
Despite Osh what not being a fully evolved Pokemon, nor a really powerful Pokemon, I actually loved it a lot. And why that is, it's because of its personality. It was a Pokemon who always wanted attention, was very proud of its power, even getting jealous at others, it was lazy at times, can get angered easily, and finally, it even flirts with any female Pokemon it finds, which I always found funny. Just overall, it was such a lovable goofball because of this. Every time I saw it on screen with these traits, I just smiled. My favourite moment from Oshawott throw overall has to be its rivalry with Piblup, if I'm allowed to count that, as there's not really any battles I liked a lot from this Pokemon, they were just decent to me. But regardless, I just found this rivalry to be the funniest part I've seen from Oshawa in the Black and White series. Ah, uh, such a goofball. Overall, Oshawa gets a 7 out of 10. You don't need to be a strong battler to be entertaining. Pig Knight. Pig Knight is another one of those Pokemon that got abandoned by a trainer, which Ash then decided to catch. And although this concept got used again, I'm not gonna lie, I still enjoyed its story and actual character. There was just something about the flashbacks we saw that made me feel really sorry for Tepig, more impactful than Charmander, although this is a very unpopular opinion. Regardless, when we saw Pig Knight's battle against that trainer and become more powerful, happier than before, was just really heartwarming to me. This being my favourite moment from this Pokemon too, due to how much I like the story. As for everything else though, I just found it a lovable, cute Pokemon that actually performed fairly well in battles, the most memorable ones coming from the Junior Cup for me, which I really enjoyed. I for sure think this Pokemon is underrated. So overall, Pig Knight gets a 6.5 out of 10. Snivy. Snivy was an interesting Pokemon to me, and why that is, is because of its mysterious backstory, which we unfortunately never got to see, but still because of that, it made Snivy such a serious Pokemon, even when Ash caught it. Sure it showed happy emotion at times, but it was almost all the time serious, the most serious of Ash's Pokemon in my opinion, and I just liked it a lot, it had a different feel, and I couldn't help but think Snivy was such a badass when it battles due to this personality and the cool vibe it was pulling off. I even love how it had a tract as it made for cool strategies at times, despite this being a very unpopular opinion. My favourite moment from this Pokemon though has to be its rivalry with Iris' Amolga in Amolga and the new Fault Switch. I love that I didn't want to pull up with Amolga shit. Wow, this even continuing on throughout the series, which I loved a lot. Overall, Snivy gets a 7 out of 10. I just wish we got to see its backstory and even see it evolve, as it could have given it more justice and even make my rating go higher. I just loved it that much. Scraggy. Scraggy was an alright Pokemon for me. It had a funny personality, such as how it headbutted everything. It had decent battles, such as the ones in the Club Explosion tournament battles. It finally got stronger, which made me happy. And finally, it had good development, such as when it learned High Jump Kick from the Wild Scrafty and Focus Blast with Ash. They were both pretty cool moments. In fact, I'd probably say seeing it learn these moves are my all-time favourite moments from this Pokemon due to how much I enjoyed seeing them and the sense of development felt amazing. It was just a weak Pokemon at first that hatched from an egg but slowly got stronger when learning these moves. Very nicely done, I thought it would actually evolve too. Unfortunately though, that never happened, which is a disappointment. But regardless of that, it's still a decent Pokemon, so I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. Levani. Levani is definitely one of the most interesting entries to Ash's team. I did not expect him to have one. However, despite this, I actually kind of liked it, mostly due to its caring personality of being a parent to all the other Pokemon. I just found it funny. This probably be my favourite moment of Levani, its evolution. In fact, it was also funny to me as Swaddle and Swadloon due to its childish, prankful, then meh nature. <laughs> I just wish we got to see it more as a Swad Loon though, as it barely had any screen time, which made its evolution into a Levani feel really confusing. Also, for another disappointment, every battle we saw from this Pokemon wasn't really that great to me, which I wish they were, as it could have made for some interesting battles. But hey, once again, you don't need to be a strong battler to be an entertaining Pokemon. So, I'm gonna give this Pokemon a decent 5 out of 10. I like Scraggy more though. Sorry. Palpitoad. This Pokemon barely got screen time, which is why I have to say that it has no personality, development, nor memorable moments. Apart from saying to yourself, why did Ash catch this in its introduction episode? I've then seen it later on in the league that one time, saying to yourself, oh yeah, it exists. Seriously though, why did the creators make Ash catch this if he's not going to use it? 
I thought we were done with the Kanto era. Meh. Overall, I'm going to give Palpatine a 1 out of 10. I don't think I'm being harsh as I legit can't think of anything else for Gone of this Pokemon. Why it's a 1 instead of a 0 though, is because it had a cool sludge wave animation. <laughs> oh, that's such a terrible reason for giving it a 1. I'm just being nice, okay? Bulldor. Bulldor is another interesting slash weird entry to Ash's team. And much like the other weird ones, it barely got any screen time to shine. Which is disappointing. In fact, the most personality I ever saw from it was as a rock and roller, which says a lot. I guess though, my favourite moment has to be as battle it had in Clay's gym, and maybe just how it got introduced. I would play a clip, but show pro. Basically, it jumped onto Silent's food and ruined it all, making Silent get really annoyed and sad. The reaction he gave was just the best. And I don't care if you say that's mostly a Silent moment. There's nothing else to say for this Pokemon anyway. So overall, I'm going to give Baldor a 2 out of 10. Crocodile. Crocodile has to be my favourite of Ash's Unova Pokemon. And why that is, is because I found it to be so cool and powerful. And let's face the facts here now. So far on this list, my favourite Pokemon overall from Ash are the cool and powerful ones. <laughs> Regardless, I just found it to be so cool due to its strong, smart, compassionate and proud personality. Along with those dope sunglasses and how well it actually did in battles. To be honest, my favourite battles in Unova mostly came from this Pokemon. They were sweet. My favourite probably having to be when it defeated Iris' Dragonite in the Junior Cup. I loved its moveset so much too. It made for cool strategies. Finally, to top this Pokemon off too, I just loved the build up to its capture, even if it was a bit late down the road. Regardless, it was admiring Ash, but never asked to be caught until Ash asked it, which it showed to be really happy. It was a really cool moment. Overall, this Pokemon gets an 8 out of 10 for me. Greninja Greninja is for sure my favourite of Ash's Pokemon ever. However, at first, I'm not gonna lie, when it was a Froakie and a Frogadier, I just felt mad about it. However, once the whole foreshadowing happened with Olympa, I got very interested in his future, which when that future finally became reality, aka Ash Greninja, I got so hyped due to how much power it was showing, and I just really wanted to find out more what the form was. I found the form idea to be so unique too. My favourite moments overall from Greninja though has to be the training arc it had, where Ash and Greninja got overconfident in their abilities with this new form, and then they kept losing, making each one get depressed, but they resolved the issues and grew a stronger bond, perfecting the form, which overall I believe was a great story. Also after that arc, Greninja pretty much made half of its battles my favourite in the entire anime. It's such an awesome, hype-inducing, powerful Pokemon, you gotta love its music theme too. Like seriously, this Pokemon just overall made me so hype, which hype is like the best feeling ever. To top this Pokemon off too, I finally felt some good personality from it when it became a Greninja, as it pretty much acted like Ash, which was amazing to see in a Pokemon other than Pikachu. Greninja overall gets a perfect rating of 10 out of 10. It may be a bit biased, but I can't express how much I love it, and I shall never forget it. As unfortunately, it did get released. <sighs> but hey, maybe one day it will actually return. Talonflame. Talonflame is my second favourite of Ash's Bird Pokemon. Once again, Ash's Bird Pokemon don't really have that much personality, but I saw a bit from Talonflame, which I found okay. However, what I like the most about this Pokemon is the great battles it had and how cool it looks within them. The biggest example for me being Talonflame vs. the legendary bird, Moltres, and Talonflame vs. a lot and some pheasant. Going against Moltres was just a great way to evolve and add some pretty nice moments, even if they were small, and as for it going against on pheasant, bruh, I just loved the fast paced action throughout the entire battle. Overall, Talonflame gets a nice 7 out of 10. Holucha. At first when I found out Ash was going to get this Pokemon, I was like, oh no. As for some reason, I really disliked Hallucha in the games. However, once I saw its funny, proud, strong personality in the anime, I started to love it a lot, even starting to admire Hallucha's in the games. Hallucha just always made me laugh from its personality, even though the comedy wasn't intentional. And some of its battles were pretty epic, such as it going against Sneasel. That strategy was just wow to watch. Finally though, it didn't get much development, which is disappointing, However, apart from that, I legit can't say anything bad about this Pokemon. 
So for that reason, I'm going to give it a 8 out of 10. Well done, John Cena. I mean, Holucha. Gudra. Gudra was Ash's first fully evolved dragon type Pokemon. And oh boy, it was really lovable. As a Gumi, I couldn't help but feel sorry for it due to how scared it was of fairy types and even how weak it was. But once we learnt of its tragic backstory and see it evolve overcoming its fears, opening up to Ash and of course become more powerful was just so satisfying and made me feel really happy for the Pokemon. Such a well made, sweet story. My favourite moments from this Pokemon though has to be when it saved the wetlands, came to help Ash in the league as it got released which really sucks, and finally its battle against Clement Slugs Ray. It was a boss in all battles. I think it got like a 90% or a 100% win streak too. That's great. Overall, Gudra gets a 9 out of 10 for me. I just really wish Ash didn't release it though. But hey, I will admit, it did make for a nice emotional story. Noivern. Noivern is the last Pokemon for this list, and the last of Ash's Kalos team. When it was first announced that Ash would be getting a Noibat, I was so excited, as this would be the second potential fully evolved Dragon type that he would own. Two really awesome ones too. However, Noivern turned out to be a big disappointment for me. It did have some nice episodes dedicated to it, such as that one racing episode and how it evolved, although that idea already got used on Talonflame, but still I liked it. And I guess the best moment overall would be its battle against the Lawn Salamence. That was pretty sweet. But apart from those episodes and like only one cool moment, and I guess its personality as a Noibat, as its personality was just met as a Noivern, I just didn't really like this Pokemon apart from that. It hasn't even won any official battles too, which really sucks. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to give Noivern a 4 out of 10. And that concludes my very long opinions. Wow, that was uh, quite a journey. I've nearly lost my voice, guys. <laughs> Regardless, the three Poketubers I want to tag to see do this tag, and hopefully your video will be shorter, <laughs> is Pokedan, Lumios Trenizak, and the Pokerath. I can't wait to see your opinions. But to those people who are still here watching this video, if you did enjoy, then please show your support by leaving a like and a subscribe for future Pokemon content. It helps out a ton. For now though, this is Entity Maze, signing out. Thank you for watching. Oh, that was the hardest video ever to record.